Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is sterilization validation. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you are new, make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end to get the bonus questions. Our topic, sterilization validation, comes directly from 1345 section 7.5.6 and 7.5.7 and 820.75. Sterilization validation in five words. Validate and revalidate sterilization processes. If our medical device is sterile, we have to ensure that we have a validated sterilization process for our medical device. Within the medical device industry, there are common sterilization processes that happen to fall in what the FDA calls category A. And those are radiation, so gamma and E-beam, ethylene oxide, autoclave or heat, and then moisture or steam. Each of these sterilization methods has a corresponding ISO standard that outlines kind of the minimum expectations and requirements to meet in order for that sterilization process to be deemed validated and valid. There are other sterilization processes that fall into category B, and then on top of those, there are sterilization processes that are novel. If you utilize one of those other processes, your validation work will be more rigorous and you'll have to do a lot more explaining of what you're doing because there may not be a, a corresponding ISO standard that outlines the requirements for that specific sterilization method. When preparing for our sterilization validation, there are a number of things that we have to consider. The first being the sterilization method itself. It needs to be defined and we need to define this, the actual sterilization chamber that we will use. Second, the site where the sterilization takes place has to be registered with the FDA. For gamma or radiation sterilization processes, we have to define the dose. For chemical sterilants, we have to consider residuals. We have to understand whether we're going to use biological indicators or we're going to use parametric release. We have to look at the number of sterilization cycles that our product or process may be able to handle. We need to analyze the material properties of our product and see which sterilization process best fits those products. We have to consider pyrogenicity and endotoxin testing for our product. And then finally, what sterility assurance level do we want for our product? Sterilization is a critical part of making sure that our medical device is safe and effective. Sterilization processes themselves have to be revalidated on an ongoing basis, normally revalidated annually. Some sterilization processes require other support programs to ensure that they maintain their effectiveness. What I'm thinking about here is for gamma radiation, we have dose audits, and for ethylene oxide, we have to look at bioburden and we have to have a, a bioburden monitoring program in place. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, my sterilization process is appropriate for the product that I'm sterilizing. It doesn't degrade or hurt my product. Second, my site, it's listed with the FDA. It's registered with the FDA. Third, I have a full, complete validation, an IQ, OQPQ for my st sterilization process. Fourth, any supporting programs that I have for my sterilization program, whether it's bioburden, dose audits, endodoxin testing, they're established, they're in place, and they are meeting expectations. Fifth, I've taken into consideration multiple val multiple sterilization cycles on my product. So I know whether I can do 2X or 3X sterilization on my product. And then finally, I revalidate my sterilization process annually, and I make sure that that revalidation is done and all the reports are signed off. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, I have the wrong sterilization process for my product. Second, my site's not listed with the FDA. Third, my validation's not complete. Fourth, my support programs from my validation process, they're not functioning appropriately. They're behind, they have overdues, and all of those various things. Fifth, I did take into account multiple sterilization cycles, 2X, 3X of my product. And then finally, my annual revalidations and my change management, it's not effective and my process loses its validated state throughout the year. And now for the three bonus questions. 
Do we outsource all of our sterilization or do we have some of the sterilization on site? If we do have sterilization on site, which sites have what sterilization processes? Second, do we have supporting programs like dose audits, bio burden monitoring, endotoxin testing? If yes, who manages those programs? And then finally, when it comes to the annual revalidation, who has to review and sign off on those annual revalidation reports? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.